All right, kiddos, let's do this. Roe versus Wade. Um, one of the most consequential deb- um, Supreme Court cases in history. All right. So let's get directly into the perspective of Roe versus Wade. We know the concept, at least the background of it, right? It specifically deals with the concept of abortion. At least that's the theme here. But there's a lot more to it than just that. So let's get into it. Um, First of all, questions that must be answered in regards of Roe versus Wade. One, is abortion considered a moral question by the majority of American citizens? So one of the major questions here is the concept of a question. It's to decide the moral aptitude of the American people as it pertains to um, Roe versus Wade. And it's incredibly important to understand and to grasp um, the fact that what are moral standards of the American people? And this question is predicated on the overall morality-based um, concept of Americans, right? We all know, we talked about this in class, <clears throat> everyone has different moral standards and, and moral beliefs. But as Americans, the majority of us feel a certain way about certain concepts, certain situations, certain perspectives. Um, so let we'll get into this concept later on in the PowerPoint. The second question is, is abortion considered murder? by the majority of American citizens. Now, this can go in so many different ways, right? Many individuals are hardline, um, pro-life, no matter the situation, you're gonna go straight into having the the child itself under no circumstances should abortion be be legal. There are some individuals that take a lesser stand by saying if an individual has been um, sexually um, assaulted, or in, reg- or in the case of incest um, itself, that the possibility of abortion is is utilized can be utilized. We have other individuals that goes on the total opposite end of the spectrum that says no matter what a woman's have a right a woman have a right to choose what she wishes to do with her body, even if in the concept of abortion itself. So you have this con- you have so you have from one side of the spectrum to the other. And we'll talk about this concept in a few as well. Um, Also, does the decision to have an abortion rest with the individual, the fetus, or the government? Now, this question has a lot of consequences to it. If it lies within the individual, then abortion is fine um, for, for women to choose, right? The fetus, what exactly constitutes the right in regards of a fetus, right? And also, can the government dictate should a woman be able to either have an abortion or not have an abortion? Does the power of the government rely on this perspective? Does the power of the government reach this concept? But not only that, should the government make decisions about what what a human should do with his or her body exactly what i said earlier before and of course that's the government this government's decision to allow or prohibit abortion reflect the best interests of american citizens if we allow abortion to fully commence does the image of america deteriorate or does it stay the same or is it high or, or is it heightened as well as vice versa if American government can decide to prohibit women from having abortions. Does that say negative about the about our about America? Does it heighten the American standard um, in the eyes of the of the global society, or does it say the same? So these questions must be answered. Hopefully, you'll be able to answer these questions based upon the PowerPoint itself. Let's go over a quick vocabulary concept. I'm not going to go in detail, but it's important for you to understand what these vocab happens to be, especially when you're doing your project um, that I presented to you. Um, you have to understand what the concept of the abortion happens to be. Define what the fetus happens to be as well. Viable and, vi- and, and viability. Know that concept because that's a very important key term 
in regards of Roe versus Wade about what is viable and the viability of women to have or not have a child, the viability of the government to dictate or not dictate to a woman to have an abortion or not. What is precedent? In other words, the concept of what court cases can you know, are decided to either enhance or or negate the current the current case of Roe versus Wade. Now let's get into the case itself. All right, so this lady here and this lady, two different ladies. This is Norma McCorvey, right? Norma McCorvey in the second picture there is, AKA Jane Roe, challenged the anti-abortion laws in Texas. It is important to grasp overall that Norma McCorvey had to hide her identity because of the negative st stigma that abortion had overall. And this is why the her lawyers <clears throat> and the courts hid her name um, in regards to the backlash that would occur later on. So Henry Wade was one of the, the, of the individuals who enforced the Texas abortion laws when he was named the defendant in Roe versus Wade lawsuit. This has happened in Dallas County, Texas, right? And <clears throat> the Texas civil law forbade abortion, except in the cases when the mother's life was in mortal danger. In other words, no matter the situation, outside of the woman possibly die be during the childbirth, is abortion a viable source? Remember, viability, viable. It's a viable source. Even in cases of sexual assault, doesn't matter. Even in cases in regards of, um, of incest, doesn't matter. The woman must be able, at least within the, in the area of Texas, in the state of Texas, to have the child and either take care of the child or put the child up for adoption, right? The Texas Supreme Court heard the argument twice. So it went to the Texas Supreme Court one time. And then Roe, Norma McCarvey, and her lawyers went back to get a reversal decision in regards of Roe versus Wade. Now, the first hearing in December 13th, 1971, by Sarah Weddington on behalf of Roe and J. Floyd of the state of Texas. So you heard this concept by Sarah Weddington, right? And representing <clears throat> Jane, Roe, Jane Roe or Norma McCovey in this court case. The second hearing was about, about nine months, eight, nine months later, where Sarah Wellington represented Roe, but this time Robert Flowers represented on behalf of Texas. So you had two different attorneys representing Dallas County in Texas, while you had the same lawyer representing Jane Roe. Um, there were some inconsistencies. There were some things that happened in the court case itself and the trial itself that lent into the second hearing. Now, the decision that was made at the time went directly to the Supreme Court. And, and basically, you had so many individuals protesting the concept of either defending the life or, or defending choice. The nation at this time, <clears throat> at least the environment at this time, was very split, right? You had so many individuals who uh, were co highly concerned about the, mor the, the moral compass of America, whether you allow the government to dictate what they should do about a woman's right to choose, as a, and as well as so many people are concerned about having a woman have that choice, no matter the consequences to her or even the child 
in regards of abortion. So the verdict was decided on, on January 22nd, 1973, right? Because he's going to Supreme Court. By a vote of 7 to 2, the court held that a woman's right to privacy was entitled by the 14th Amendment. Okay, so remember we, I, I mentioned the 14th Amendment to you in previous PowerPoint presentations. And hopefully you kind of understood the concept of the 14th Amendment. But I'm going to quickly recite the 14th Amendment to you. Is that all persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and of the state wherein they reside. More importantly, no state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States. Let me read this to you one more time, right? Let me recite this to you one more time because this is the part in which the seven Supreme Court justices all agree that the Dallas County, Texas lawyers and laws harmed quote unquote Jane Jane Roe and women itself. They're saying that no state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge, in other words, shall stop, right? The privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States. The second half of this is just as important, where it says that nor shall any state, including Texas, of course, shall deprive any persons of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. It's important to understand that if a woman has the right to choose and, and, and has invariable rights like everyone else does, then they also have the, the power to decide what they feel is best for them as women, for their families, and so on and so forth. And what Roe is stating here, or the lawyers for Jane Roe, is stating that Texas has abridged her rights as, as a woman by dictating to her what is best in that setting. The actual decision itself gave women total autonomy, 100% autonomy, over their pregnancy during the first trimester. This is the first three months, right? Now, the justices that agreed to this concept, the justices that stated this is correct, are, are Justice Berger, Justice Douglas, Justice Brennan, Justice Stewart, Justice Marshall, Justice Blackman, and Justice Powell. These seven men specifically stated that the 14th Amendment and the decision in which they're given gave women a total autonomy over pregnancy just within the first trimester, the first three months. Now, after the three months, then the abortion should, should be unwarranted and unjustified, all right? So it's giving women the complete autonomy within that first trimester, no, no more than that because of the development of said child in the womb. Also, as a result, the laws of 46 states were affected by Texas court's ruling. In other words, there are the other 46 states, not just the South, but 46 states had to abide by the current laws that are set forth by the Supreme Court by saying abortion is legal only within the first tri within the first trimester, the first three months, 12 weeks, if you will, right? Now... This is part of the loophole in which 
many states have gone through, which I'll get to in a second, in regards to the loophole. The precedent here is that the decision gave the states the right to intervene in the second and third trimester. So, remember we talked about loopholes. The loophole here is just saying, look, that the Supreme Court gave the rights to women to decide what's best for them. But simultaneously, simultaneously, the Supreme Court gave power to the states to dictate after the second and third trimester, the states can bar or ban the concept of abortion. So it gave the rights, it gave the power, it gave the perspective to them overall. That's an important perspective to understand. That's an important, important concept to grasp. The power of the states is now given to them by the Supreme Court when it comes to the second and third trimester. Because if a child's life has been formed based upon doctors, notations, and testimony within this particular trial. Now, this also leads to the concept that if states have a right to stop an abortion at the second or third trimester. This also leads to states, especially Republican-led, Republican-powered states, to create loopholes for women regarding abortion. For instance, um, the, the, the documentary entitled Jackson, I'll, I'll look for this particular documentary and post this, um, to uh, the lecture itself. Hopefully I can find it and you'll have it for you. In Jackson, based around Jackson, Mississippi, there, there are centers that are near abortion clinics or were near abortion clinics that label themselves as assistance for young women or for women in general in regards of of having a child. And this center lures many women in to test their to test them, make sure they're tested in regards of pregnancy and the possibility of holding out, if you will, holding out these women from going to an abortion clinic. So remember, after the first trimester, one day after the first trimester, they can't have an abortion. So many of these facilities help them by trying to lure them in and to convince them that they don't need an abortion. And once they're able to test them or even delay the test for a while, and say that, well, now you're pregnant, you have, you know, you're 11 weeks pregnant, we suggest you shouldn't, and so on and so forth. You go to an actual abortion clinic, they tell you you only have X amount of days, and based upon state rule and state law, you may not be able to effectively get yourself checked the way that you need to in order to have the abortion, and now... You have an abort. You have a child. You may not may not want or able to take care of. Now they have stopped the possibility of you having an abortion, which is many of their 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 points is to do just that, right? To stop the influx of women possibly having an abortion. Now, this happens a lot, specifically in the, the, the Bible Belt, Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, especially Mississippi, Alabama, Florida, Georgia, Tennessee, 
many of these states have these have these claims, these concepts to them, right? So it's important to grasp that. That is their their ticket, if you will, right? It is their way to stop the concept of abortions that happen in the states. This is what I mean by their loopholes in the decision making. Now, the four pillars of Roe, again, same person, Roe, or, or Norma, Norma McCovey. Now, there's, there's, four, there's four pillars here, but I also have another four pillars in which kind of gives a little twist to this case itself, all right? So bear with me on this. You're going to see what I'm talking about. The Roe decision was grounded on four constitutional pillars. It's predicated on four constitutional pillars here they are okay one based upon the constitution itself and based upon the decision making by the supreme court the decision to have um, to have an abortion was accorded the highest constitutional protection in other words the supreme court says look if we're going to grant women the opportunity or the possibility of having an abortion this has to be up there similarly to the First Amendment rights and 14th Amendment rights, right? It is a, an important perspective to have regarding women's rights. So we're going to lock it up as high as possible, similarly to like the First Amendment rights, 14th Amendment rights, things of that nature. The second pillar is that the government had to remain neutral, Legislators could not enact laws to push women to make a certain decision. Now, remember what I said earlier about certain states, in particular, like Mississippi, had clinics to convince women to not have an abortion. This was allotted because legislatures that are against the concept of abortion weren't part of the centers. This was a non-governmental, non-profit center. So this is the this is the backdrop of it. Legislators could not be could not side one way or the other in regards of it. They had to remain neutral. The other problem is that it's kind of hard to tell legislatures to be neutral when you have their own personal opinions, viewpoints, and ideologies that dictate their thought process. It's hard to do, if not impossible. The third pillar is that in, fa in the phase before the fetus is viable, the government may restrict abortion only to protect a woman's health. So in other words, this is the other loophole that allows Roe versus Wade to be gutted. If the state or said clinic deem it viable or deem the concept that it may restrict abortion only to protect a woman's health, the government can step in and do just that. They have to just say, look, if you have this abortion, it's going to hurt you. It can mortally harm you. So it is important to have the child, whether through the natural birth process or through a C-section. And not just that, the fourth pillar is after viability, the government may prohibit abortion. But laws must make exception if it means health risks with the woman. So now the other portion in regards of of, of, of gutting Roe versus Wade down the line is if the government decides that abortion itself, as I said before, will harm the woman and have long-term implications, they can step in. All they need is one piece of evidence to prove this. And ironically, there are doctors out there that believe this is the case. Therefore, all they need is just that. One person, one doctor to agree to this concept. 
And therefore, you have the gutting of Roe versus Wade down the line. So this case is predicated upon these four pillars. Now, as we continue on, keep in mind the four pillars of Roe today. Now, in 1973, this was the, these were the pillars that Roe were going through at this time. Now, let's go over what is of today. Right, and I put 1992 because this is the start of the four pillars at this time frame in 1992. Now, only two of the four pillars remain. And as a result, you had Planned Parenthood versus Casey in 1992, where a woman's right to choose is still constitutionally protected, at least in the time frame where the case or this case was sent to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court stated themselves that, look, a woman's right to choose is still constitutionally protected. You can still have the right to choose. A woman has that right. You can't take away that right as a, for a woman. However, under cases, the states no longer had to be neutral in the choice of abortion. Remember before in 1973, right, 19 years earlier, a woman, the, the state had to be neutral. You had to find a neutral setting, a neutral judge, and a neutral background to decide what's best for a woman. But this time around, in 1992, a much more Republican-led Supreme Court says neutrality is out the door. Based upon the fundamentals of the state and what they believe in will determine the perspective or should said state either allow or allot or not allow this particular um, child to be born or not overall. The government is free to pass restrictions on abortions based on morality code for religious anti-abortion views. In other words, the state itself can determine how and or how or if a woman is able to choose to have an abortion based upon their moral compass and moral code. So it's important to grasp, this is the start of the plunder, if you will, of Roe versus Wade, gutting the core fundamental values of Roe versus Wade. You, you can no longer be, have, to, have to be neutral in regards to the case. And the second concept is you can base your decision off of you, off of their or the states or the judge, if you will, morality compass. Not just that, states are now pro permitted to prohibit abortion. So in that same case of Planned Parenthood versus Casey, they're specifically stating that look, states can use their own moral compass you don't have to be neutral, but more important than that, states can't prohibit the concept of abortion based upon what? Their moral compass. So it is a, almost a fundamentally re re reversal of concepts in regards and perspective in regards of Roe versus Wade. So the Supreme Court case of Planned Parenthood versus Casey is a prime example as to how to gut the original court case of Roe versus Wade without making it moot. In the 21st century right now, in Roe, eight years after the Casey decision, the Supreme Court agreed to hear another case which Roe would be re-examined. Alright? So, they're going to re-examine the concept of Roe. Now, this is several years of Roe, eight years after Casey versus Planned Parenthood. 
Now, during this period, Clinton appointed two justices. He appointed Justice Ginsburg, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, and Justice Breyer. Justice Breyer is no longer on the Supreme Court now, but Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg is. So, in a 5-4 decision, in Steinberg versus Carr, the Supreme Court struck down the ban. The decision lacked a clause protecting abortions to preserve the mother's health. So in this case, the ban of abortion by states based upon their moral code was banned, at least in this case. at least in Steinberg versus Carr. Now, this vote indicated future problems. The future problems that the Supreme Court was, on, was only one vote away from literally overturning Roe. In other words, if the Supreme Court had, if, if Ginsburg and Breyer were Republican based justices. Roe versus Wade would have simply been overturned. This case showed without any equivocation whatsoever that with, with this case, Roe versus Wade would have easily been overturned. And therefore would have outlawed all would have outlawed abortions itself. Now I want to be clear about this. Abortions itself were vile before this ever occurred. Stories of women, of young ladies and women mutilating themselves to take this fetus out because they didn't want the child. They couldn't handle the, the responsibility of the child itself. And there are so many stories that, sh that explains how bad and how devastating, how negative abortions were or self-abortions. Even in the years previous, in the 50s and the 60s, women died on the the gurney in abortion clinics giving an abortion because it was so vile and hurtful and harmed the body of women this at least at the time many democratic appointed judges were terrified that it would revert back to what happened in the 50s and the 60s in regards of abortions Now, there's major controversy in regards of Roe, and it's what I mean by controversy. Now, many of these pictures here, you see that it's, you still have a very divided group of people who are concerned, if you will, about the concept of abortion, right? You have many people who are very, very much for women's right to choose. And you have so many people that are extremely for the right of 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 life in regards of of of, of abortions. So you have two different sides of the of the coin here, right? So one, Roe versus Wade sparked immediate social debate and protest. Matter of fact, it start it, it, it sparks debate and protest even to this day. They mobilized the two groups of pro-life or anti-abortion versus the pro-choice. We know about this because we can see this and heard about this many times over before. However, several states enacted laws limiting the right of an abortion. This includes mandated parental consent for minors to obtain abortions. In other words, if a young child at the age of 17 or younger is pregnant, 
a parent must accompany them, or must accompany her, if you will, to the abortion clinic and state that it is okay for the doctor to perform this particular procedure upon her. Also, parental notification laws must be present and it must be explained to all parents overall. Also, spousal consent laws were created as well. So, Republicans felt that if a female is going to have an abortion and it is, and that female may be with a, a boyfriend, a fiance, husband, then the spouse must know as well that she is having an abortion. Laws requiring abortions to be performed in hospitals, not clinics. So several states enacted these laws that if you're going to have an abortion, you need to have you need to have it at a f hospital or a hospital, a similar hospital type of facility, not clinics. In hospital facilities such as facilities there where you have surgery, you can stay overnight, right? And there are several facilities. There are much smaller hospital units that do just that. Also, laws barring state funds for abortion. So in other words, if you are if you have an um um insurance and you work for a state organization or you work for the state, then your insurance itself won't be able to pay for the procedure in which you wish to have. Also, laws mandating women to read certain types of literature before choosing an abortion and many more. In other words, you go into an abortion clinic, a couple of things have to happen. One, they have to give you several brochures and, and, and explain these brochures to you as to the the possible harms of abortion. This happens a lot in Mississippi and in Alabama and even in Louisiana in which you must be you must read and understand and consent to the form of having an abortion. Arguments which was made on both sides. This is critically important for you to grasp as well. In regard to this perspective, it is important to understand that in, when it comes to pro-life your life, you, you believe that the embryo is a fetus. If you believe in this concept, if you're pro-life, you believe that the embryo is a fetus and a human from that moment of conception. In other words, the moment you are pregnant and the moment that embryo is starting to form, you believe that embryo into this, in, into this, in this infancy stage is a human and they have a heart a brain and able to understand and feel the pain itself. The termination of abortion, uh, the termination or abortion of a human fetus is considered murder. And if that's the case, then therefore you need to charge said person with murder. That hasn't happened, at least as of yet. Right? That hasn't happened as of yet. But at the same time, the abortion has a responsibility to advocate or protect the life of the unborn child. In other words, people who are pro-life believe that the government has a right itself to protect that unborn child. If the parent doesn't, the government has a responsibility, no matter the consequences, no matter the situation, to protect that child overall. And they must use all the, all the resources necessary to protect said child. But at the same time in reverse. When it comes to pro-choice. You believe that a woman. Or any woman. Should be given the right to choose. What happens to their bodies. It is their bodies. You shouldn't allow any other outside interference. To determine what a woman should do with her body. How they should do. How they do things with their body. And the manner in which they do things with their bodies. Which leads me to the third, the second concept of pro-choice is that the government must not take a moral stance. Morality is a basis of an individual ideology. Again, morality is the basis of individual ideology. 
One's ideology may not be the same as someone else's. I made a clear distinction about this also. My ideology or my basis is if anyone messes with my family, everyone messes with my wife, my children, anyone messes with my mother, then I have an obligation to protect them. Even if it means me killing said person, that's my moral corpus, right? That's my moral code. That moral code may be 100% different from you. So to dictate to someone, in particular female, what to do with her body, based upon an idealistic mora morality-based concept, is flawed. And the government must not interfere in individual liberties. If you have stated in other previous um, um, Supreme Court cases that the government has no right to interfere in the rights of individuals, the rights of groups of individuals, or even the rights of the press, why should the government interfere in the life of a woman? So because of this, many pro-choicers believe there is no way around the concept to uphold individuality, yet it still has the government dictate your, um, your future. So, with this in mind, this is basically the end of Roe versus Wade. All right. We talked about the arguments. We talked about um, what Roe versus Wade is all about, the perspective, the background. And by the way, one of the very next things I forgot to tell you was that Ms. McCorvey, later, who has later been identified as Jane Roe, actually switched sides. She's now a proponent for pro-life. In other words, while as a younger woman, she advocated for abortion because she had several abortions of her own as well. She now fights on the side of pro-life. So her stance has changed 180 degrees to the opposite end, which is also another pillar as to here the four constitutional pillars of why so many states are advocating for the concept of pro-life than pro-choice because even Ms. McCorvey, a.k.a. Jane Doe, turned her life around, if you will, and now is for pro-life and no longer believes in pro-choice. All right. With this in mind, um, I will post this online. You should have it very soon. Um, I will also have manipulatives and summaries for you to go over and enrichment activities of that, of that nature to have an understanding of what the case is all about. If you have any questions, any comments, any concerns, please give me, a, please let me know. I'll be more than happy to answer these questions for you. Please, again, I can't remind you and tell you more enough. Be safe. Um, be healthy, be responsible, um, do all the things that's requisite for your health. And uh, again, any questions you have, email me. I'll email you back immediately or as soon as I can. All right, y'all. Y'all take care.